Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with the final video in my 2022 Valentine series. This one being the most obviously Valentine themed. <laughs> and it's the last one because one, Valentine's Day is basically here. And two, um, I'm going to move on to other things. But yeah, I wanted to make some tags because I had some like little candies and things to give to my kids. So I pulled out these, uh, these are like mixed media tags. They're by Dina Wakely. I'll have a link to them. They are very heavy stock, you know, like the Ranger heavy stock so that you can hold up to all the liquids and mediums and things like that. I bought these forever ago. I can't remember why, you know, watching a Tim Holtz video of some sort. And I was like, yeah, I need all the things. And I think I ordered these and all, who knows what else. And then they've just sat here. <laughs> so anyhow, I pulled these out with some distress spray stains and ended up doing basically kind of a mono print of sorts. I was spraying the stains onto the tag and then decided to press it into another tag. So I get two backgrounds in one. And also it creates a really neat, like it smooths things out. And I don't know, it's something again, I'm going to have to experiment with because that's not really what I was originally going for, but it works. I'll link to the spray stains I use, but they're, yeah, sponge sugar, kitsch flamingo, picked raspberry, candied apple, you know, pinks and reds. So I have all my tags and then I want to add um, some stenciling. So again, like I was just mucking around. I've got some clear or trans uh, texture paste. This is transparent gloss was the first one. And I'm just putting this onto my media mat here. And then I was like mixing in some of the limited edition icicle paste that I've shown in other videos that I love. It has a shimmer to it. You don't necessarily need to like, yeah, you can use things as is. You could use glitter paste for this, anything. I Again, I was just messing around. And this actually brought me back to like back in the day when I used to own my salon and do nails. This is exactly how I used to like do custom like glitter gels and things. I would do stuff literally like this. So I kind of had fun just sitting here and playing. I poured glitter onto this Simon's Unicorn Dust Glitter. So really in the end, I made my own glitter gel which you totally can do. I love glitter gels. I have several of them, but this is also a way to make your own is just to use uh, the transparent gloss texture paste and then add glitter to it. And then if you do have excess, you can put it in another container. In the end, I actually, just by dumb luck, I had just enough for my tags. <laughs> Usually it's like too much or not enough, but for whatever reason, I made just the right amount, so it was fine. So anywho, I got my little texture paste. I was using Simon's Dot Runner just to basically adhere the tag to my glass. This is the travel size glass media mat. And then I was applying this uh, mixture over Simon's large falling hearts stencil. That stencil came out. I don't even I don't even know how many years I've had it. It's still available. It's one of my faves, but that's what I was using. So because this texture paste is a gloss and it dries transparent, it literally is just going to be a subtle, clear, and with the sparkle I added to it, sparkly little background. So then I'm going to add some splatter. I could have done this before the texture paste, but like I said, I was just playing around, like just having fun with this. So for my splatter, I'm using my Avery L white spray, which is my current favorite. I did think about adding gold splatter as well. That would have been gorgeous but if you guys could have seen the state of <laughs> this is the state of my desk and like the surrounding area when I was doing you know when I'm really just mucking around and kind of experimenting and playing I oh the disaster I have more space in my cold little garage workspace than I have ever had before and I still managed to completely overwhelm it all with stuff everywhere but anyhow anyhow added all that splatter and then um, I set those aside and then I pulled out these are some ideology heart shaped gumdrops by Tim Holtz. I've had these, I've been hoarding these for a while. I think they came out. I got the pack of them in a limited edition kit. They're still available. I checked before I um, did my editing and yeah, they come clear like this, but you can alter the colors to whatever you want with alcohol ink. So that's what I did. So I pulled some out and actually used some. The rest I'm going to keep hoarding, as always. And I just put some watermelon alcohol ink onto them. Just a couple drops. And then set them aside to dry. 
So that tints them this nice kind of reddish sort of a color, which is just fun. And yeah, any of the like ideology type, there's so many, there's so many because like he's got like metal items and resin items and these sort like there's just there's lots. Again, I need, mm, I don't really use a lot of like 3D elements, but when I do get them in like kits and things like that, I hoard them because <laughs> they're so pretty and I just, I like them. So anyway, anyway, did that, set those aside and then I pulled out the little um love day stamp set from simon and just these little critters were perfect because you know i'm making these for my kids so i just stamped the cat image and the dog image from that set onto some distressed watercolor paper and i'd use my anti-static powder tool and i stamped the images with versafine claire nocturne ink and then i coated everything with clear embossing powder and then melted that with my heat tool so i've got all these images and I had done one each extra of each of these images, which is a good thing because my brain was just frazzled and I like ended up coloring like the first one, not the way I wanted to, but I'll get to that in a second. So I've got them stamped and heat embossed. And then I'm working on my little glass media mat again, and I'm just smushing the distress inks I want to use right onto the media mat. And all I'm using is four colors. I'm using hickory smoke, black soot, candied apple, and kitsch flamingo wanted to keep the coloring really simple since I'm doing so many I was you know had all these tags etc um sometimes you know it's fun to color the image you know I could have colored the cat like our cat but she's a tortoise shell and that's time consuming <laughs> I actually did a video last year around this time last year for one of my kids birthday cards and I did like the tortoise shell coloring but this time I was like nope keeping it simple because I'm doing so much so this is why it was a good thing to do extras because this first one I painted the heart with candied, candied apple and that's not what I had intended to do. I wanted them painted with kitsch flamingo because I wanted the heart lighter because I'm going to stamp on top of it in a minute. So yeah, this is why when you have space or anything, do a few extras because why not? So I'm just using my little water brush, picking up the distress uh, inks that I've smushed onto the palette here and then painting with that and like I said keeping it simple I did the hickory smoke for the cat and the dog just why not um, and then I used the black soot for like the little spots on the dog and the noses and things like that and then for like their ears kitsch flamingo and then this little guy I'm using the candied apple for his little heart balloon that was why I had the candied apple was for this one so after I got everything um, painted, I'm going to stamp one of the little sentiments from that same Love Day set. And I'm using one of my VersaFine Claire Nocturne inks for that because I was thinking, you know, like those conversation hearts, those nasty chalky things that I love the look of, but I don't actually like as a candy. Just ugh, gross. Anyway, <laughs> they look really cute. They do. I really like the look of them, you know, of the candy. I just, why? Why? They're just gross. Anyway, anyway, stamped on top of that with these. The stamping isn't as crisp as it normally be because these actually aren't completely dry, but I was okay with that. And it kind of made them look, I don't know, a little more realistic in the sense of conversation hearts, I guess. So stamped everything. And then when everything was fully dry, I die cut it with the coordinating wafer dies. And then letting everything dry, do its thing. I pulled out more tags to stamp a big sentiment from the XL Love Greeting set. And I'm stamping the sentiments with um, Picked Raspberry Distress Oxide Ink. I could have stamped, stamped these on the backs of the tags. I did all the inking and whatever on. However, I like got smears and all that on the back of those tags, which is whatever. But it was just easier to do a second tag and then I'm going to glue them together, which I'll show in a minute. So this way I can just go through and stamp. Also, I would have had to do the stamping before I um, did all that stenciling on the fronts anyway, because there's, you know, texture from that. So this, this method or this line of reasoning just works. Plus that pack of tags I bought, I think there's like 50 in a pack. I'm almost positive. Like I said, I'll have a link. I've got a ton of these tags because I bought more than one pack. <laughs> so to glue them together, these tags have the reinforcers already glued, like very well glued onto them. But all I'm doing is 
peeling off the reinforcers on the back of each of these tags. I just use my sharp scissors to kind of peel it up and then you can peel that reinforcer off. You don't have to do this, but by removing that, it'll make the tags adhere together flush, which is just, it's a little, it's a small extra step, but for me, it just makes it a little, like makes it work better and yeah, you know. So after I peeled off the reinforcers from the back of them, I adhere them back to back just like so. So I've got the front of the tag with all the inking and the stenciling and then the back is where I can write something and I have that stamped sentiment. And then to add to these, I used Simon's big XOXO wafer dies and I die cut a bunch. I just sat and die cut for a bit because I die cut um, them from some red glitter paper and some pink glitter paper and then also die cut from a bunch of scraps of white cardstock that I stack together off camera so that they've got more dimension because like Laura Basson says, dimension is life. I agree with well, she sings it and I love it, <laughs> but I agree with her. So made all that dimension. So same thing. It was like I did all the die cutting and adhering and just, I don't know, I think I was listening to a podcast or something. Anyway. Once I had all those, I adhered them to my tags and then I had white heat embossed a sentiment from the Love Day set onto black cardstock and I also used the coordinating die to die cut that. So this is happy Valentine's Day. I think in this year's series, this is the first time I've used anything that actually says happy Valentine's Day. Go figure. But anyway, I adhered that with some foam tape, um, little, little foam dots. And same with the little character. So I've got my little puppy dog, you know, floating off with his balloon. I've got the little kitty cat. And then I adhered my gumdrop heart that I had tinted with the alcohol inks. And then I also have these, um, they are chunky, I think chunky, chunky soft pomegranate pearls from Little Things by Lucy's Cards that I had purchased whenever. I don't even know. Um, I stuck those on as well because like I've always said, I have enough embellishments to last multiple lifetimes. So I sprinkled those throughout just because I could and adhered those into place with craft tacky glue. And then off camera, I added like baker's twine and ribbon from my stash because of course, like I've got lifetimes worth of ribbon and all that kind of stuff too. So I added that to all of these tags as well, just to give them that finishing touch. And then I'll attach these to little bags of candy and give them to my kids, give them a nice little sugar rush. And you know, these were a lot of fun to make. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I will have pictures in my blog post, picture links to everything that I used, all that info, to find it will be in the description box directly below the video if any of you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching, for subscribing, thumbs upping, commenting, all of it. I very much appreciate it and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye!